Just over three years ago, I bought a leisure travel van and I recently bought this Winnebago Navion. So I've been really comparing the Winnebago Navion and the leisure travel van. And today I wanted to make a quick video talking about price, some of the differences between the two units. They are very similar. And this is a 2018 Winnebago Navion. I did own a 2017 a leisure travel van, so they're very comparable. And then I want to look at the pricing of how they've both held up on resale value over the last few years. And then I want to talk about what the pricing is on the new 2024s. Now there are several different floor plans. This is the 24V floor plan with the twin beds that can convert into a king. And then the leisure travel van I had was the Unity Murphy bed. So there's lots of different variations with different floor plans, but they're both single slide, uh, class B plus, class C units. Now one of the biggest differences that you'll notice between the two is on the outside, the front cap on the Winnebago comes over the cab where the leisure travel van has a more sleek style. So you do gain extra sleeping in the Winnebago, but you have a more sleek look on the leisure travel van. This van had an MSRP new, uh, just over $150,000. And the base MSRP of a 2018 leisure travel van, depending on options, floor plan, you know, you can get a non-slide or a single slide. A single slide uh, is going to be about $135,000 and there are some variables there. But the Winnebago did have about a $15,000 more MSRP when this coach was brand new. Now, those of you that are familiar with leisure travel van, they're very sought after. They're very hard to get a hold of. Uh, they usually sell out a year or two ahead. But the Winnebago Navion, of course, is going to have the Winnebago name behind it, a very well-known company. And I think they would negotiate more off of MSRP on these Winnebago Navions new than they did on the leisure travel vans. But I want to talk about current market value of both of these coaches and how they've held up over a few years. So it is getting a little warm out here. Let's go take a look inside. And I know a lot of you guys called me out for what's going on inside here. The sofa in this Winnebago is peeling. I definitely need to get that repaired. I'm thinking about doing something really cool to up the style in here. I'm thinking something in a cream color with some diamond stitching or something really cool would really spruce this up. And I'd love to know what other upgrades you guys want to see me make. And you know, I have to recommend a one upgrade to er anybody buying a pre-owned motor home. You owe it to yourself to get a good night's rest. And that's why we've partnered with RVMattress.com, Brooklyn Bedding, to get you all a 25% discount with the coupon code Andrew Steele. And I haven't gotten a Brooklyn Bedding mattress for this Winnebago yet. They do have custom sizes. So if I want to get two twin mattresses, I can do that. If I want to get a king size that may be more of an RV king size mattress, they've got all different sizes and they're high quality mattresses. They've got a 10 year warranty, 120 night sleep trial and free shipping. And I think when I put a new mattress in here, it's going to be very easy to bring the box in here. And it's really cool the way it unfolds. It's much easier than Jack around with going to a mattress store and trying to haul a mattress uh, in the bed of a pickup or on top of a car. You get free shipping right to your doorstep in a nice convenient box. So I definitely recommend Brooklyn Bedding Mattresses. And then also, if you don't need a new mattress, but you do want to treat yourself to an extremely high quality blanket, this is the real deal. This is the chunky knit blanket. And they also have different high-end bedding options and pillows as well. Now we really appreciate BrooklynBeddingRVMattress.com sponsoring the channel and we're looking for some really good RVers with stories in the Tampa, Florida, down to Fort Myers, Florida area that have really cool RVs that want to share some of their stories and we've got some cool gifts for some of those guests that will be coming on the channel in the near future. So if you are willing to share your coach and story with the channel, you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. 
Instagram, and I'd love to hear some of your stories. And we want to give some of the coolest RVers out there some really cool gifts. So we really appreciate Brooklyn Bedding RV Mattress.com for sponsoring today's video. But let's talk more about some of the big differences between the Leisure Travel Van and the Winnebago Navion. So I want to talk about pricing on both of these. Now the 24 Leisure Travel Van, the 24 corner bed floor plan has a base MSRP of $188,840 I'm seeing. And the 24 Murphy bed has a base MSRP of $201,580. Now it's hard to get a good deal on a Leisure Travel Van. I know some have exchanged hands over MSRP and they're very sought after. Uh, the rear lounge in 2024 has a base MSRP of $190,000. Now the Winnebago Navion uh, in 2024 in the 24D floor plan is going to have a $203,000 MSRP, which is going to be right in line with that Murphy bed MSRP. Now, I think you could probably get a much heavier discount on the Winnebago than you can on the Leisure Travel Van. And looking at resale value of what current JD power value is, I used to call it NADA value, but one of you corrected me that JD Power did buy NADA RV, so now JD Power is the authority kind of on RV pricing and uh, banks will gauge what they'll lend people based on that pricing. So looking at the current JD Power pricing of a 2018 Murphy bed, low retail is going to be 102400 and average retail is going to be 123400 And keep in mind that it had a base MSRP of $135,324. So that is wild to see an RV only go down $12,000 in value from when it was brand new. That's almost unheard of uh, in five or six years. The 2018 Winnebago Navion that had a $151,603 base MSRP now has a low retail of $78,000. $250 or an average retail of $94,300. So the Winnebago's definitely have not held their value as well, but I have now owned both of them. So I really want to give you guys a really good comparison of the two. Now, the biggest thing that I like the most about this Winnebago Navion that my leisure travel van did not have was the diesel generator. That diesel generator was an option on unities of that time. I know everything is going more towards the lithium batteries in the new 2024s. I really like the lithium battery systems. Uh, some of them can be charged off of an alternator. And I did have a chance to use uh, that Gretsch Strata Ion and the Gretsch Luso with the lithium battery system. And I'm a big fan of those lithium systems. But in this vintage of RV, I definitely recommend having a diesel generator over a propane generator. I put right around 20,000 miles on that uh, Leisure Travel Van Unity in one year when I had it in 2021. And that was probably my biggest complaint was having to find propane because I'd be running that AC unit, traveling all over and then it run out of propane. And it was hard to find propane in a lot of different places, but we needed the AC while we were going down the road with the dog. So I just think having a diesel generator where you can fill the big diesel reservoir and then you don't have to mess around finding propane stations. It's a lot easier to find diesel fuel. Now the quality of the materials, the Leisure Travel Van, I, I mean, I, I believe this is an aftermarket. I don't know if this is originally from Winnebago, but the quality of some of the materials may be a little bit nicer in the Leisure Travel Van. It was a different style and design the way everything was engineered, but really the Winnebago has a really cool style as well and I think when I upgrade this sofa this might look really cool but you know they've got the cool accent wall and honestly this ceiling stuff here this ceiling design reminds me of what I've seen in the new Leisure Travel Van. The Leisure Travel Van did have some more manual stuff, like the skylight up here uh, was manual in the Leisure Travel Van. It's a button in this. 
it's nice to press a button, but personally, I know that stuff does break in RVs. I always want one less thing that could break. So I preferred the simplicity of just having a manual hook to open and close the big vent right here. And if those of you saw my video, my five problems with my leisure travel van, one of the big things I complained about was the curtains. And the leisure travel van has curtains that if you roll the windows down, they're kind of flapping around in the wind. And then I accidentally rolled the window up, the, the curtain got caught in there, I didn't see it. Open the door from the outside, didn't know the curtain was stuck in the window rip the curtains, had to deal with some stuff like that. But I really like the accordion curtains and how flush and clean, there's no gaps where someone can see in. Uh, with the leisure travel van curtains, I kind of had to Velcro them together and hope that you know there wasn't a little gap in the, in the curtains where someone could peek in. Now this um, up here, I talked about it a little bit outside. I prefer the sleeker look of the leisure travel van. I don't really need this and I'll probably move this up just to have easier access to the cab. Uh, I'm actually going on a really cool uh, maiden voyage with my girlfriend Julianne in the Winnebago here in the near future. We're going to be vlogging. We're going to an unreal uh, campsite. Uh, a lot of people have told me that this is arguably the nicest campsite in the world. So we got to count for a couple days. It's extremely expensive. I've never been to this resort. Really looking forward to uh, sharing that with you. And we'll get my girlfriend Julianne's review on the Winnebago as well. Another big differences are the different floor plans that are offered between the two different companies. I really like having this area back here. I like this setup. I think a little better than the Murphy bed. It was nice having that huge rear bathroom, but I think I can make this bathroom work pretty easily here. You know, I might not be able to change in here, but having all of those blinds tight, you don't have to be as worried. And I've got plenty of height here. I need to get this out. I don't know what the heck. I guess they're maybe just using this as a closet. I don't even know if they're even sleeping in this coach or it almost looks like it was built to come with the coach. Yeah, I've got plenty of uh, headroom here. And drop a comment below if you guys know if this is aftermarket or original, but I do have to thank the previous owner of this van. He actually shot me an email. Uh, he had an extra speed sensor and that just really tells a story of an owner that really cares for their stuff when they're buying extra parts and pieces to make sure everything's serviced. And when I saw the date codes on the Michelin tires and started touching and feeling everything, I could tell they really cared for this Winnebago. So I'm looking forward to putting this more to the test. Now, one of the areas that I think the Winnebago has a huge advantage over the leisure travel van is the holding tank capacities. The Winnebago has a 31 gallon freshwater tank, a 36 gallon gray and 36 gallon black. So a lot of holding tank capacity where the leisure travel van is only gonna have a 24 gallon freshwater tank. And I know seven gallons doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, when you need to take that extra shower sometimes that can really come in handy and then it does have a 37 gallon gray tank and a 29 gallon black tank the leisure travel van does have an extra gallon in the gray tanks so you can go a little bit longer without dumping but I'd rather have that extra seven gallons in the fresh water tank. And also keep in mind with that extra water, you're gonna be adding more weight. So that may slow you down and affect your fuel mileage a little bit. Now, talking about fuel mileage, I think this front cap is probably gonna affect fuel mileage a little bit. Driving this, you know, with the fresh Michelin tires, they always drive nice. I think having good Michelin tires will make or break how an RV rides. Uh, if you have the wrong tires on a coach, no matter how nice it is and how well built it is, it won't ride nice. I kept fresh Michelins on that leisure travel van and this has fresh Michelins on it. So they both drive really good, but I did notice just a little more maybe wind noise up at that front cap and it's, you know, you've got a little bit bigger piece of a fiberglass on a really windy day that kind of acts as a sail. So the leisure travel van was definitely more aerodynamic and I think it would probably drive a little bit, little bit better, but I, I don't notice too too much of a difference with this. So I'm really looking forward to uh, 
taking this Winnebago Navion on some more journeys in the near future. And I may pop back into a Class A sometime here soon, but this is a great van. Uh, we use it as a, a work office when we're filming and editing, and we've been using it, driving it around, uh, running it, and I'm really impressed with you know the overall build quality of the Winnebago. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts and opinions are on the Winnebago Navion versus the Leisure Travel Van Unity. I'm sure I left out a bunch of information, so I appreciate all of you that helped me out in the comments below and share any facts that may be good wisdom for other folks thinking of buying one of these units. So thanks to all of you that are subscribing to the channel and a huge thanks to Brooklyn Bedding RV Mattress.com for sponsoring this video as well. We really appreciate all of you and hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again.